Hello. We're going to look at an interesting program now called Marble. To open Marble, we go down to the Start menu in the lower left-hand corner and click once on that with our left mouse button. Then we move our mouse up to Education and then to the right and down to Marble. To open Marble, we'll click once with our left mouse button. When Marble opens, what we see is a globe. And this is a good resource for teachers that teach classes like social studies, geography, history, um, and in the Philippines, Arling Panlipunan. It allows us to look around the world and see where different things are and to see information about the Earth presented in different ways. What we're going to do first is learn how to do something called navigate. And you'll notice up here and near the upper right upper left hand corner it says navigation. Below you'll see this shape like a cross and this allows us to move around the globe in different ways. So for example if we click the right button it causes the globe to move to the right. We can also click to the left or we can go down or up. One thing I like a lot is the ability to zoom. And let's move this down a little bit with the scroll bar and look at the zoom. This is where we see the zoom. So there's a slider bar here that allows us to zoom in or out. And we can also click on these magnifying glasses here in the same way to zoom in or out. Now one thing with marble, it, it's usually better to see more area, so I'm going to make the marble program go full screen. So to do that, we're going to move our mouse up to the upper right hand corner of the marble window and click once on this small rectangle here. And When we do that, marble will go full screen. So again, by navigating, we can click these buttons to go to different places on the globe. One other thing that we can do to navigate is to move our mouse over here and you'll, when you do that you'll see it becomes a hand and if you push down and hold your left mouse button and move that hand, that's another way to move rapidly around the globe. So those are some basic navigating features. One other thing we can do when navigating is to type an, a location into the search window here. Right here where it says search, we're going to click our left mouse button and we're going to type in a location. So I'm going to type in San Francisco. Now you'll notice that there are several different San Franciscos. I'm going to double click on this one and you'll see it goes to then San Francisco and if I zoom in I can see where San Francisco is. Let me try another example in, in Tanzania I might want to know where Arusha is so I can type in Arusha and it takes me there to Arusha and I can even see many towns around Arusha and if I want to zoom out again I can use my navigate. So that is the navigation area. So we can zoom, we can move, and we can type in a specific location where we want to go. The second tab we have here after navigation is one called Legend. If I click on Legend it shows different information about the symbols on the map. So you can see that it shows towns of different population sizes, it shows capitals of nations, uh, states and counties, it shows terrain, uh, so mountains or volcanoes, and it shows some other areas of geographic interest. It also shows boundaries, water bodies, elevation, and so on. 
Now the legend depends upon the type of map we're looking at. And to change that, we can go into the third tab here, which is Map View. So if we click on Map View, we'll see that right now we are using a theme called Atlas. So that shows uh, the, the different international boundaries and so on. But there are many other options for themes. So one that I think is interesting is one called Earth at Night. So when I click that, what that does is it shows me what the Earth looks like at, in the nighttime. Now suppose I want to zoom out or move around. What I can do is go back up to where it says Navigation, click once, and I'm back in my Navigation panel. So now I can zoom out and I can see how things are lit differently around the world at night. So let's go back to map view again and let's explore a few other map views. Another one that I think is interesting for students is precipitation. So if I click on precipitation, it shows me the average precipitation in December. And it does that by showing different colors that indicate different average levels of precipitation. Now you might ask, well, what does blue mean and what does green mean and so on? So to see that, we can just go back and click on our legend again. And if we scroll down in the legend, now we see what the colors mean with respect to the average precipitation. So these areas that are colored tan, they have on average 10 millimeters of precipitation. And so we can see where that is. But this shows the areas where there's more and less precipitation. If I go back to map view, I'll see that not only do I